Okay, I've showed you how to uh, download uh, the model and set it up. I've showed how to use the uh, basic functions and mite treatments. Uh, now you have a choice of customizing the model, uh, uh, customizing the colony setting uh, to represent uh, beekeeping and the hives in your specific area. Okay, let's get into a little more advanced now. Now let's just say that, um, uh, let's look at your choices for colony types. So where, where you enter the uh, um, the D for the default value here, the, oops, put a D in there and enter and I get my default value. And what the heck is that there? Okay, and uh, uh, but let's just say that the default colony is not what you want and you want to do another type. Well, you go down here to the colony tab and you click colony. <clears throat> and what this shows you is the list uh, by letter. I got the defaults, I got the nuke, I got the package, uh, one to customize, a high latitude colony. I made this with data from uh, New Brunswick in Canada, California almond pollinator, uh, my own operation right here, a colony that swarms in April or a feral colony. This is based uh, largely on uh, data from Dr. Tom Seeley, uh, a colony is kept in a single, um, uh, deep Langstroth box. <clears throat> now there's two things that you need to do is you need to enter or actually three things you need to enter uh, uh, over here the number of frames containing brood in your hive uh, at every time point through the year for so twice a month the number of frames covered with bees and then uh, over here the percent of drone brood in that colony. Very critical. And these things, these three things are very critical to build your colony type because all the calculations are based upon these ratios. Most beekeepers will greatly overestimate <coughs> the uh, frames of brood and the uh, frames of bees. It's almost impossible for a queen bee to have more than six full frames of brood. She can have 10 up to about 65 percent covered with brood so what i've done a, i've shown a pic, typical brood frame with the uh, open brood out here the sealed brood here this would be a 65 percent coverage so what i'm letting you do is to enter the equivalent of how many frames are 65 percent covered um, and then i suggest is um uh, and you can you can you can enter these over here you can put in the number of eggs that a queen can lay in a, a day and a good queen will lay 1,500 eggs a day. An exceptional queen can lay 2,000 eggs a day for a relatively short period of uh, time in the spring. This is just checks right here. So let's go down. You can see each one of these colonies has a graph uh, right here associated with subtropical high latitude. Um, mine, which I've, I split right here. And um, uh, colony swarming, you can see the uh, the uh, bees leaving and the uh, amount of brood reduction uh, right there and the uh, feral hives, which are very, very small. So let's go back, let's, let's take a look at this default one. You can customize your colony. I was, and, and as you do this and people send me customized colonies, I will add more colonies to this model as, we, uh, as I update the model. Let's just take a look at the default colony right here. So um, you can put in uh, periods here if you want where it's too cold. And that'll make sure that you're not doing too much brood rearing right there. And if you put in where there's a strong pollen flow, where, there's a, where it's cold, you're not going to have much brood rearing. And where there's a strong pollen flow, you will have a lot of brood rearing. And that kind of will help you to see. And the colonies will build up when there's a lot of brood rearing. And the colonies will decline when it's cold and there's not much brood rearing. So those are not critical, but those will help you with this. And that's these figures right here. Just put in a one in any place where there's brood rearing. So let's just uh, and let's just let's just say it's too cold. Let me put a, a, a cold here. I'll put in a, a one there and a one there, and uh, uh, we'll enter those. And I'm not seeing why that's not <laughs> okay. I guess I need to work on that. Figure out why. Let's go over here. Um, okay, frames containing brood, and that'll be the dotted line. So let's say right here let's just say that um you're ending these in here and let's just say here you get wild and you say you got eight frames of brood well you just see this huge spike right here well you can check on this um o over here because that just said that your um your this will calculate how many uh eggs the queen was laying a day um for that 15 day period for you to get that and she was laying about 450 eggs a day and she bumped up to 1800 eggs a day well that's that's not going to happen 
in this temperate climate that early in the season. So you see this spike. So this allows you to smooth your curves uh, out right here. So we're going to take this back down to uh, what was that? Was that back at uh, three right there? Um, and uh, oops, that was a three, and that was a five. Okay. Now we see we've we've put it back here. You can just also hit um, uh, uh, escape here, and you can use the back arrow also to go back to wherever you you want it. But I'm going to go back to full screen. Okay, so you're going to put in these values, and what you're going to do by putting these values in, you're going to watch your curve. You can you can make this curve work. So like this one right here. So let's just say right now this is five. Let's put this up to ten frames of brood right there. Obviously, the queen's not gonna gonna do that. Although, if the colony plugs out with uh, with nectar, that 10 frames might go down to one frame. Well, this this actually does happen when you have a very strong nectar flow. You may have a sudden decrease in the amount of brood right right there. So you put this in, and the same with your colony population. And full frames covered with bees. I'm not talking about partial frames. So, so again, you have to, you can look at this here. So let's just say I got wild here, and instead of 16, I put in 22 frames covered with bees. Well, when your, your curve right here shows this spike, that's not going to happen in your colony. So this helps you to, um, um, oh, that's 50, that was 16 there. Oh, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do escape. I'm going to go back to fun, boo, and there. I've got back, I've undone my, my damage right there. So feel free to do that. Just back up when you when you play with this, and you're going to create your um, uh, uh, your colony here. This little spike in brood ring is from a fall goldenrod pollen flow right here. So you get some, some more bees right here. So this is where you create your colony. And you can change your colony for your specific area. Eventually, what I'd like to have is for every eco region in the United States that somebody will have sent me a copy of the spreadsheet with these numbers here. And oh, this is your amount of drone brood. Now, this is not just drone cells. This is when you look at your brood frames, what percent of, of the frames of the actual brood is drone brood? So in the springtime, um, well, we get a lot in our area. We don't get very much in California later on, but other areas, they have that. So this is critical because Varroa reproduces more quickly in the drone brood. So make sure you, you get this one accurate also. Um, and you can tell if you uh, increase your amount of bro drone brood, you will see it in the mite buildup in the simulations off of this. Okay, so that's that's how you work on your colony to customize. And eventually we'll have a whole bunch of co customized colonies for every eco region uh, that you can click on. But uh, right now we'll go back to here. Okay, now you've set up your colony um, settings, uh, customize the colony, uh, the model for your exact colonies here. Um, and you can ready to move on now, if you wish, to more advanced settings. Um, these are mainly, mainly gonna be for researchers and uh, people interested in uh, selective breeding of bees. All right, have fun.